back to chassis sensors for a moment. Let's take a look at the ride height sensors. All right, so the ride height sensor, depending on where we locate them, some teams will locate them uh, under the rear end housing to see how much the rear end's traveling during the course of a run, or some other teams will put them up in the nose of the car, see how long it's carrying the front end, how high it's carrying the front end, because sometimes the shock travel sensors can't extend that far, whereas we get far more range out of an infrared ride height sensor. So we've got shock sensors measuring the relationship of the travel between the rear end or the front suspension and the body. We've got a ride height sensor mounted on the rear end looking at the ground down. How does it actually measure that so distance? So what the sensor does, it sends out a focused beam of light and then it measures the angle at which it comes back and hits that sensor. Knowing what that angle is, it tells it, it knows exactly how far it is from the surface. Okay, so if I know my rear end's compressed two inches and the rear end uh, the rear end's travels compressed two inches and the actual housing is a quarter inch closer to the ground, I'm truly two and a quarter inch closer to the ground overall, right? Exactly, yes. All right, now what about the uh, ride height sensors in the front as far as wheelie control and that type of stuff? Well, so, uh, several teams will look at it and use that as an input once they see excessive front end angle, uh, you know, if the wheels are up too high in the air, they'll use that as an input back into the system to try and retard timing or some other way of reducing the power so it returns to a more level stance.